Welcome back to the Value Investors Club. I'm your host, Timo Wunderlich. Let's get right into it with VIC Readings, the form of where we look at the best of the best value investment recommendations by the best of the best value investors out there. Today, we have Furry Corp, ticker is F E R R E Y C 1. Uh, price of the pint of finding is $2.00. And 25 cents. Let's get right into it. This is not a recommendation, not advice. Please do your own diligence before investing into it. Uh, before investing into anything. I'm sorry. Let's get right into it. Description Ferry Corp is the caterpillar dealer in Peru, not a country option on VIC. It has been durable enterprise, founded about a century back and publicly listed for about 60 years. It's a pretty good business, I might, with a few notable drawbacks, including number one exclusive reliance on cat to produce good products at competitive prices number two servicing customers whose relationship often sits with cat uh, procurement uh, department at majors and number three uh, cat would withdraw the distribution rights to a territory on limited notice so when they say jump dealers uh, when they say jump dealers must ask some variation of how high Cat dealers also have positive attributes, such as number one, strength in the mining sector, with many mines using only one supplier for logistical reasons, cat or uh, kamutsum. Number two, trucks and excavators may effectively operate 24-7 and are continuously being repaired at the middle of nowhere mine site or rebuilt in specialized workshops. And... Number three, with many dealerships, um, as with many dealerships, the aftermarket service is recurring and attractive, frequently have good absorption rates. Peru is a nice territory in that it's well endowed with high-grade minerals, the second and seventh largest copper and gold producer, respectfully. In both cases, Peru's position on the cost curve is strong, and the country's resources are considered underdeveloped versus its more pro-mining neighbors, such as Chile. Over time, it may be reasonable to expect that numerous discovered but undeveloped or uh, or or bodies get mined. The world probably needs that copper eventually. Hang, hang on a second. Didn't Peru recently elect a communist president that just got thrown in jail after an ill-fated coup, leaving simmering civil turmoil that has impacted mines? Okay, fancy pants economist reader. I guess that's worth a touching on pre-valuation. Rewind. Four years. Uh, Peru is the new South American golden child. Chile had its own challenges. With an impressive decade of GDP growth, a young population and no communist leaders or coup in a while. Um, but like most of South Africa, Peru um, thinks have been tilting populists as the fruits of capitalism haven't made their way onto countryside tables. Plus, Peru had an atrocious, atrocious pandemic. Anyway, the last election turned on a knife's edge as the dark horse leftist beat the controversial establishment candidate, last dictator's daughter, by less than a point. That new president was, somewhat predictably, ineffectual. Presidency is a weak office without congressional support, and he responded to impending impeachment by trying to dissolve Congress. That was a checkmate in one blunder without institutional support, and he's now in preventive detention. detention. The replacement figures are viewed as much more traditional. Clearly, even peer reviewing uh, experts uh, don't know exactly how the ball bounces from here. They didn't foresee this guy in the first place or his coup. It's worth noting that many institutional forces in Lima are quite anti-communist. Shining path, not that long ago. I expect market forces, property rights will remain intact and that low-cost mines will stay open slash half-built mines will be finished. That's not a very quantitative prediction, but at least the bond markets seem to be handicapping some comparable normalcy. Lending Peru dollars for 10 years um, earns you about 5% while, while local bonds sold earn you 8%. Those rates are comparable-ish to Mexico, uh, lower and local. Valuation. I think Ferry Corp is cheap. Trading near its tangible book value with an attractive ROTE and a PE of something nearish 5 to 6x, maybe in 15 to 20% earnings yield, targeting a 60% payout ratio. Is high teens earning yield attractive if you get them in sold? Clearly with some expectation of depreciation. 
I think so. But it's actually a somewhat dollarized business and weak local FX can somewhat help. Fair bid of gross profit are effectively US dollars. and Fair bid of the SGNA is sold. There are also some global comps and ferry seems like good value relative to those as well. Many of whom have also have macro risks such as Finning in Chile or Balo in <coughs> Eurasia. Honestly, I think Ferry Corp's capital allocation is uh, pretty good. They've paid very healthy dividends, uh, bought back shares when it made sense, funded organic growth at attractive returns and will probably delever a bit over time. The governance also seems solid and they seem to legitimately care about their perception by capital markets. They've won best corporate governance award in Peru and that type of thing. My conversations with local market participants, uh, participants uh, slash other knowledgeable parties have always indicated that they are an uh, ethical and prudent company. In summary, I think this is a good business at an attractive price, offering a very decent risk reward for some appropriately sized position. Risks. Peru stuff, mining cycle stuff, Komatsu and someday Chinese equipment. Catalyst. Value, baby. Thank you very much for tuning in. See you next time. Please write down in the comment below what you think of this idea. Fair